So the moment my life changed is the moment I decided to stop being a card and become a player. One day I was in a meeting and that meeting was taking too long with a client and I decided I don't want to be in this business anymore. These people were coming to me for things that I was not selling. A lot of people live their lifestyle based on what income they have or what business they're in. For me, I wanted to design a lifestyle and then find a business that will support it. Hey guys, welcome to Oxy Vlogs. Today I'm going to interview an entrepreneur who was running a successful business, he was making millions, he was being invited to speak internationally, but it didn't make him happy. He didn't feel fulfilled. So today he helps people around the world to transform their lives and realize their dreams. What did you do before you came to Dubai and why did you decide to come here? Uh, so I come from a technology background. Uh, personally, I'm a systems analyst and a systems engineer. Uh, I worked for multinational companies and uh, in different countries around the world. After that, I opened my own uh, technology company based out of Jeddah and was serving uh, mainly Saudi as well as the Gulf uh, area. And this IT business is very hectic. There's a lot of project meetings, business trips, uh, contracts, tendering. And I just, this, one day I was in a meeting and that meeting was taking too long with the client and I decided I don't want to be in this business anymore. So I later informed my partners and actually stepped down from that company. And to be honest, I was planning my early retirement and I looked at three different uh, places and Dubai was one of the finalists. And I did actually go and visit those places to see which, be, which would be an easy place to land and set up uh, a, a small business out of. And, and Dubai actually won, of course. What did happen next? I didn't want to get more involved anymore into meetings, into bidding processes, uh, business travel, extended conferences. I had enough. Like I think after 15 years or so in that business, I had enough. So I wanted to move to a business that is um, uh, more fulfilling, that it will support my lifestyle and not the other way around. A lot of people live their lifestyle based on what income they have or what business they're in. For me, I wanted to design a lifestyle and then find a business that will support it. So I designed my lifestyle that, okay, I would like to have dinner with my family at least five times a week. Uh, I would like uh, to work uh, between uh, maximum, maximum eight hours a day. I would like to enjoy lunch at least two, twice uh, a week. So I, I set up that kind of lifestyle and then I said, and I took some time off to think. Um, and one of the things that kept popping up while I was designing my next tech company is people were coming to me for things that I was not selling. Uh, they were coming to me for things to, to do with career, uh, things to do with the starting of a business, uh, things to do with relationships. Uh, and I would help them. And then what I noticed, and I think this was the point, when, I'm, when I moved to Dubai, people will actually take a ticket, will book a hotel for two nights to come and see me. I said, wait a minute, if people are paying tickets and hotels to come and see me, then I must have something that is very valuable to them. So I said, let me start by charging them to come and see me. And people did pay. And I was booked two months down the road. So then I realized, and I, showed, I was trying to figure out what do people come to me for? And they come to me for clarity and action. So I said, okay, clarity in what? So it's clarity in their life. And then action in what? Action in one of four areas. Either career, relationship, money, or business. So I said, okay, what if I can structure what they're asking for and make it available to more people? So I stopped taking on appointments and I went back to all my notes and all my recordings to see what questions were people asking and what kind of answer I was giving. And I noticed I was giving almost the exact same answer every time. And that answer was working. So I said, fine, how can I structure that answer in a way where people can just do it by themselves? And after a few iterations one of the things that came up was visuals what if I use visuals because symbols and visuals are an international language people will understand visuals from the time they're four years old okay uh, people will understand the visual if they're traveling without even knowing how to read the sign so I used visuals to help people discover what they want in life what's holding them back what steps they would like to take or they need to take to move forward as well how they can create an environment around them to enable them to achieve their goals. And I packaged all that into different products. Our flagship product is called VSOL. 
V-Soul is short for visualizing the invisible soul. And I call them transformational journeys that would help people to transform and shift from one life track to a new life track using the different tools that I have created over the years. Some of those tools are physical that come in a box made of puzzle pieces. And some of those tools are actually electronic available online through an online academy. Was it easy to set up a business in Dubai? Setting up the business in Dubai was quite straightforward and uh, easy. Uh, first, I went through like the different uh, legal firms to understand the different structures. And I did actually go and visit the different free zones and the different economic departments to understand what kind of license they have. Now, surprisingly, and I was overwhelmed at that time, and I'm sure now there's more, there was 80 different types of licenses that you can actually uh, operate. And they cost anywhere from, let's say, 7,000, 10,000, all the way to half a million. Uh, so that was quite overwhelming. Until one day I decided to go and visit uh, uh, Dubai SME. Dubai SME is uh, part of uh, uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid uh, Foundation for Small and, mis and Medium Sized Businesses. And I presented my case. I said, look, this is the kind of business I would like to do. So what kind of bus business license uh, do you recommend? Now, they mostly serve locals. However, being a GCC national, they actually extended to me the same benefits uh, that uh, they will give uh, to locals. So I was able to get something called an out of uh, home uh, business license that they, they, it's, uh, it's offered. And the license, well, there was no license fees at all. However, there was some sort of like typing fees and printing fees. So the whole thing cost me per year 1,600 dirhams, uh, more or less. And, and that goes on for a year. And then every year you have to uh, qualify for the renewal. But it has a maximum, I think if there's a maximum of three years, then you need to move to a different uh, license uh, topic. Where are you allowed to operate with this license? So this kind of license, uh, it gives you the, uh, to operate legally out of um, a house uh, within the mainland. So it doesn't work in, in any free zones or the freehold uh, areas. You can open a bank account. And once you have the bank account, then you can also set up all the online payment gateways and all that. So. It will allow you to operate legally if it's a one person. Then if you want to upgrade and have visas, uh, then yes, with the sim similar license you can upgrade. And I think it goes 5,000, 7,000, then 10,000, depending on the number of visas uh, that you require. Can you sell your products online? Uh, yes, you can sell online. And setting up uh, online business is, is simple. Uh, in Dubai, having all the different payment gateways actually based out of Dubai Internet City. Uh, so there's a qualification procedure. They just need to make sure that you are a real business and you operate from a real place and uh, you have all your accounting and legal documents uh, and, and banking uh, in place. So the qualification will take anywhere between a month to four months. Uh, but once yeah, it takes quite a long time actually to be qualified for an online uh, business. But once you have it, then you're open to the world. You can sell all over the world. What challenges did you face with running a business in Dubai? So some of the challenges to operate out of Dubai, people need to be aware of that it's a seasonal uh, business or a seasonal cycle. There's, uh, let's call it the conference season, uh, which starts somewhere in uh, October, November and it ends in, uh, in April. This is where most of the things happening in Dubai and almost everyone is here. Um, and then there's the very slow season, which is our, the summer season. Uh, honestly, which is mainly, I would say, July and August. Uh, so if you're planning a business and planning meetings, planning tenders, planning uh, proposals, be careful of those two months because it will be very difficult uh, to have uh, meetings. And if you're selling to consumers or people who live in Dubai, then uh, this will be a very slow period uh, for you. So my recommendation, since it's a seasonal business, plan your business cycle and your vacations and your employee leaves during the low season and then make sure everybody's here during uh, the high season. So this is quite a challenge because you will actually have, you could have easily two months without a single dirham uh, coming into the bank account. And this is happening across the board, not just in my business line. And I've seen it happening in a lot of other businesses. Uh, so the, the remedy for that is just make sure you you design your downtime during the downtime of, of the cycle itself. What do you dislike about living in Dubai? It's the different fees that are coming around and popping almost every month. Uh, and I think those fees, yes, they're small, 20 dirhams here, 60 dirhams there, 1,000 dirhams here. But then when you 
put them all together at the end of the year, it's actually it's, it's a lot of money. And for small businesses or companies who are just landing, it does add up. Uh, so, so I would recommend is that, um, yes, let's look at fees, but maybe have a gradual introduction to those fees. And maybe some fees just need to go ahead and, and cancel them all, all together. Uh, yes, we're not asking to give us uh, everything for free, uh, but however, be considerate for the people who just landed or the startups, the small startups or the freelancers. They are different than big corporations who can afford those fees and for them it's nothing. If you had to start over again, what would you do differently? So the way I would do it differently is to um, look for a co-founder, if you want to call it a partner, early on. Um, because having finding uh, investors or finding um, financing is, is relatively easy in the way. And finding talent is, is very easy actually. It's one of the reasons why I'm growing businesses here. However, finding a co-founder or a partner is, is quite difficult. Uh, and I think the reason for that is because people are here for a certain vision that they have for themselves. And it could be difficult for them to, to join somebody else's vision. What does your daily life look like? I was asked um, just the last weekend by one of my clients, are you living your perfect day? And I actually smiled and I said, yes. And that, uh, for the last two days, I've been thinking about the answer that I answered. Was I true with myself? Was I true to him? Or was I just sugarcoating things? And the answer is yes. I'm actually living a day that I've designed to myself long time ago. So I woke up very early in the morning, 5, 5.30, most of the time without an alarm. And then wake up the kids around uh, 6 o'clock and get them ready uh, for, for school. And then the school bus will come and pick them up around 6.30. And then from 6.30 until 7, this is mostly my time, I go for a walk, have some coffee and, and plan my day. And one of the important things that I do at that time is I look around, I look at the beauty, I look at the greenery, the water, the birds, and I just thank God for this amazing uh, place that I'm in. Uh, I try to be at the office anytime between uh, 7.30 to, to 8.30. And then I have a block until lunchtime where mostly I work on design work that require the having a full state of mental presence. Uh, so no calls, no emails, no client meetings, nothing. It's just this time is for design and intellectual work. Uh, after lunch, I have the client meetings and sometimes there'll be like uh, three to four per day. And this is where I review with the clients who are in private journeys because I do have different types of journeys. Some of them are private, some of them are group based and some of them are self-driven. So for the ones that are in the private uh, journeys, we just have the meet weekly checkup where I check with them uh, on the progress and then give them the next piece of the puzzle for them to solve. I try to be home anytime between five uh, to six, uh, to sit with the kids and see what's going on. And uh, later on, when also my wife comes from work, we all sit for uh, dinner. Our dinner is fixed. It's at seven every day. Uh, and whoever is late, they miss it. Uh, and after dinner, just see like if there's anything to do with schools or homeworks or uh, uh, any plans that we need to plan for the weekend. Uh, sometimes if I'm just tired, I stay home. If still have energy like last night, we'll go for a walk and have some tea, uh, me and my wife uh, somewhere in one of the cafes. And what I do before sleep, and I think this is quite interesting and it did shape a lot of things that where I am today is I read or watch or listen for an hour for that's something scientific and I'm talking here about biology physics astrophysics uh, all these things that I don't understand what they are because I'm not an engineer I'm not a scientist but believe it or not a lot of things that I do today in business somehow were inspired by reading or watching or listening to something scientific until I fall asleep. <laughs> People often work long hours in Dubai. How to create a balanced lifestyle? I see a lot of people in Dubai that are stressed out and even burnt out uh, sometimes. In my opinion, they have brought this to themselves. Um, yes, it's a hectic lifestyle. There's a high competition in the corporate world, in the real estate uh, world. It's all high competition. Working longer hours and being stressed about it is not going to let the problem go away. So in my opinion, wherever you work, doesn't matter if you're working as a cashier or as a salesperson or as an executive, make sure that 
you understand what is the job you're doing and you give it that much of attention uh, a little bit more of course but not giving it your soul because once you give it your soul and all your attention all your time then actually you just became a card in a bigger game and once you become a card in a bigger game this is the moment that you lose your life I was in that position long time ago where I was a card in a, in a bigger game making sure the first one in the office making sure the last one leaving the office making sure working weekends making sure to always checking my emails and responding to my messages but for what honestly so in my opinion do you want to do you want to burn yourself out and consume all the energy for, for a job and not enjoy your life or you want to live a life and then use that job to finance it it's it's not the same thing it's completely two different things i know people who moved to dubai and until now their furniture is unpacked okay because they just come back and they're very tired uh, they're overwhelmed no time in the weekend either they're working or they're just sleeping all the time why this is not life uh, if you want to come to dubai you can have a balance if you know how to navigate and make sure that you only you don't give more and you don't give your soul yes it's required you go the extra mile but it's just one mile not a thousand miles further if your friend was planning to move to Dubai, what is the minimum budget would you advise him to have? So I get uh, people asking me on social media as well when they visit, um, we would like to move to Dubai, what's, what's your advice? How much will it cost? Uh, so believe it or not, uh, being me a structured person, actually I did create the formulas. So here's the numbers, okay? Here's the numbers. So if you're coming on your own, okay? So there's like no family involved, no kids, no spouse involved. You would need a minimum of 8,000 dirhams per month to be able to, to maintain a very good, decent life, okay? Of course, you will have to economize and uh, be, be on a budget, but 8,000, believe it or not, is enough and you could live in a nice place, okay? Now, the next uh, bracket will be 13,000 dirhams per month. If you have 13,000 dirhams per month, uh, then you can actually live in a very nice area in a studio or even a one-bedroom apartment on your own and Enjoy let's say the weekends as well where you can go out and spend some money around So 88 is the minimum and then 13 is is a very comfortable area and now once family is involved uh, Meaning spouse kids and, and all that then there's a formula for that then just add uh, 6,000 per person per month uh, For you to live a comfortable life now I know there's a lot of families living on much less than that, but then of course they're, they're living a very, very tight life. I'm saying if you want to live comfortable, meaning that you'll have uh, uh, the normal car, go out on weekends, put kids in, in, in very nice schools and live in a nice neighborhood, then it's 13 for the main, uh, uh, let's say, household person and then 6,000 per person per month. How much do schools cost in Dubai? Ah, I just came from school this morning. You want to see the receipt, how much I paid? Uh, good schools you can get from 30, 40,000. Okay, now of course schools go to up 127. The American Academy, 127 per child. You can take them to Hartford for that money. Uh, the schools where my kids are, um, well, every year it goes up because they move from one level to another, but it's averaging maybe 60 per, per child. Can you share your tips to make savings here? <laughs> I've been waiting for someone to ask me this question for a very long time. Okay, so how to save and how to live on tight budgets? Actually, there's so many tips and tricks. So I'll give you an example of how to save on your electricity bill or your cooling bill. Okay, when you go and rent in a villa or in a, in a building, don't just randomly rent. Look at where the sun is, is rising and where the sun is setting. Okay, and make sure the sun is not facing your apartment like all the time because that will actually raise your cooling bill and your electricity bill. You need to have AC on all the time. And I know this now because where we live, actually it's not facing the sun and our electricity bill and, and cooling bill is down. So that's, uh, that's one way. Uh, another, another way to save is you don't really need to go and buy a brand new car and maybe pay uh, upfront or pay high monthly uh, installments for that. There's a huge market, maybe not in Dubai, maybe you need to drive to Al Ain or, or to Ajman. There's a huge second-hand second -hand car market. And you can get cars at 50% of the price, 40% of the price. Uh, so you can actually reduce your, your monthly uh, bills. Uh, I also uh, like to recommend that people plan uh, their weekends and their staycations or their short breaks. 
a lot of people just say, oh, we have a four day weekend, just go to the airport or book online and travel and spend a few thousand dirhams over the weekend. Plan your vacations ahead of time and you can get excellent rates actually. If you were to describe your experience as an expert in three words, what would that be? Happy, safe, and future. What has this international move taught you? Different cultures have different business dealings. I'm not saying they, they, they are bad um, dealings, but rather than it's just different expectations. Uh, so for example, some people will just do a business on a handshake or an SMS or a message. Other people have to go through like weeks of lawyers to, to sign contracts. Um, and, and, so, and also the time uh, appreciation, it's different from, from different cultures. Uh, so you just need to make sure that uh, uh, appreciate uh, time uh, and have expectations right because some people would say they'll come and then you wait and they will never show up. What advice would you give to those who are planning to come to Dubai? So for everyone who wants to come to Dubai or thinking about coming to Dubai, in my opinion start with a very important question which is why do you want to move to Dubai? Okay, It could be a very uh, uh, tr um, like trivial question or it has an obvious answer but if you ask this yourself why and think about it maybe you will not come to Dubai or maybe you would come for the right reason. So are you coming to Dubai to make money? Are you coming to Dubai to enjoy the lifestyle? Are you coming to Dubai to, uh, to start up a business? Are you coming to Dubai to retire? Okay, so because each one of them will actually have uh, a different plan for you to land and a different plan for you to operate while you are here. Uh, so make sure you have very clear objective of why you want to come. Number two, Make sure you understand what are the sources of income to support the lifestyle you want to have in Dubai. Let it be an employee, let it be a family man, let it be a retiree, it really doesn't matter. But once you understand the role you want to play in Dubai, then make sure you have the proper financing for that. Coming here and then thinks just money is gonna come, it's not gonna work. Do you have any quote you live your life by or think of often? So the moment my life changed, is the moment I decided to stop being a card and become a player. Thank you for watching this video till the end. As you see, money itself doesn't make you happy. The most important thing is to feel fulfilled inside. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. We'll reply to you. And if you want to get in touch with Osama, there are contact details in the description under this video. See you in the next episode.